Yeah, interestingly enough, people, um, and you can look at this as either generational or, or exposure, but back in the 70s when there was very little wine or the wine was available was either very high end or very basic, people weren't really into wine. They were drinking more cocktails and beer. As the wine styles evolved and um, the wine became, um, uh, you had Pinots and Cabernets and Merlots and then you had blends. And you had, you know, your, your Chardonnays and, and your Pinot Grigios. And, and as people got into this, they realized that wine goes along better with food. So the more you, that, you, that you experience the different kinds of wine with the different kinds of food, you don't tend to drink more, but you tend to drink differently. You tend to drink, you'll have a bottle of wine with dinner and you'll split it with your, with your significant other. And whereas before you may not have, you just may have water with dinner, or, you know, or you may have had a beer or something else like that. You tend, people tend to get into wine. And so they tend to want to find this wine with their food. They tend to want to find it in the same places they find their, their recipes. They want, to, they want to find it with, the, you know, with that great shrimp dish or with that, you know, that wonderful stew or, or some, other kind of, some other kind of wonderful organic food. They're going to want to find something that goes with it. And, that, and that, we're seeing that developing all over the United States. And they communicate with each other by email or by, on the internet. I mean, you, you talked about YouTube a minute ago. I mean, you can see all the wine stewards on YouTube. All you got to do is, is, is you know, is, is uh, Google on YouTube, you know, um, uh, uh, Pinot Noir tasting, and you'll come up with, you know, a hundred different videos of people drinking different stuff with Pinot Noir. But it's a wonderful, and that, and that's a, that's a rising tide that's raising all boats. Two ways. Number one, by an increase in in the utilization of wine is against other beverage types of alcohol. Um, you're going to have more use of wine rather than beer, for example, because you're going to be buying more with dinner. So you're, you're increasing that positive level. Second, you're going to repatriate. You're going to capture sales in states like Tennessee, where you're surrounded by six or seven other different states that have wine and grocery stores. You're going to capture those people that go over and do their shopping and drive back across. You're going to repatriate those particular those particular sales. That's an absolute increase in, in, in the in the beverage alcohol market. On um, liquor stores, package stores tend to focus much more on broad broad number of SKUs. They'll have they'll have a thousand SKUs. So if you want that special bottle of birthday wine, if you want that expensive wine, all the SKUs in their store are going to tend to be more expensive. But that's why you're going to go there, because that's going to be the time when you want that particular one. And you're looking for the quality of service that you're not going to find in a 100 to 200 SKU of retail food store. It's just, it's, it, it's that simple. Um, and like I said, it, as you learn and as you're interested, um, uh, you know, consumption levels rise. And, and by the way, the numbers, and you can look at the, uh, uh, the Wine Market Council numbers is what I would encourage you to look at where they talk about the, the rise in the millennials. Mm -hmm. um, it, the consumption level, today there was somebody's testimony, well, we're gonna go up 5% anyway because we've got people moving into Tennessee. Well, you're gonna go up 25% because the people that are moving into Tennessee are younger and they're more knowledgeable and they're, and they're, and they're less accepting of, of, of limited selections. Women buy the majority of groceries in this country. I mean, that, that's, that's just a given. And it's in some in some outlets it's 60 to 80 percent. On in stores typically without where you don't have wine in grocery stores, Tim, when, Tim and women tend to buy less wine because they're not there. They don't like going into liquor stores. There's study after study after study saying that 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 typically both the gender-based shopper and in many cases the younger shopper, younger being in the 20s, um, they don't like the atmosphere of the old-time liquor store. It's very male-oriented. It's very cigar. You got your cigars next to your next to your Stolich Diane. You know you have you have a fo you have completely different focus. You're not looking at menus. You're not looking at, at, at what you, what you want to what you want to do. So the demographics in the grocery store are such that that you're encouraging wine with food, which is the right way to, right way to consume alcohol.